This is a little demonstration of the rotor remoter system. The rotor remoter system consists of a rotor controller that's described on the web page and a little program here. It, uh, this part of it anyway is designed to work with SAT PC32. Um, the key to the whole thing uh, is a little piece of programming brilliance written by someone else. I wish I could say I did it, but I didn't. Um, that creates device drivers. And writing device drivers is much, much more complex than writing programs. Take my word for it. Um, so this program is called COM0COM. It's uh, available on the internet. doesn't cost anything. And it looks like it's fairly complicated, but actually it's not. Um, it creates a pair of virtual COM ports. It's kind of like those various programs used for for creating um, virtual audio cables that you're probably familiar with. But this works with COM ports. So it creates two of them, and the defaults over here are just fine. So once you've set this up, you only have to do this once. Since it's a device driver, it will be loaded automatically uh, when your computer boots up. Um, set up SAT PC32. We pick the Yezu GS232 interface. And over here in the server SDX, we pick uh, one of the two COM ports that were set up, virtual COM ports that were set up by COM0COM, and set the baud rate to 9600. And we're done. Uh, we run the rotor remoter program, and it's got this little kind of goofy looking window here. And up here is the COM port. And we're currently using COM port 6, which you may remember is the other COM port of the pair that was set up by COM0COM. Um, if you do the pull-down box, these, this is a list of the currently active COM ports that are on the computer. And when the program runs or when you change the COM port, it, it attempts to uh, open that port, and if that port is open, uh, this little thing shows green. So all looks well. Remember, we've got COM port 5 over here on SAT PC32. So SAT PC32 is going to send its rotor data out to COM port 5, which will be picked up by that COM0 COM device driver and just sent over to COM port 6, which uh, the rotor remoter program is listening to that. It will then, in turn, take around and send this to the IP address that we've specified right here. And the IP address uh, that we specified right here is the IP address for the um, simple SAT rotor controller that I have set up. There's a little dot here that shows that this TCP connection is made. So when you start this thing up, it, it remembers what you put in for the COM port and the IP address and loads those in there and attempts to make the connections. The start and stop buttons, normally you wouldn't have to use those. Um, but if you're changing the IP address to a different controller or who knows what, um, you can stop. And if you click the stop, that breaks the TCP connection. And you can see that cute little red dot, or cute little dot turned red. And then you can start it again if you want. If this seems like a lot of fooling around, it is. Uh, when I originally started work on this, I tried to use the DDE string from SATPC32, but all it seems to send out 
is um, just raw satellite azimuth and elevation data, which really isn't what you need. You know, we're trying to to make this rotor that's connected over this TCP connection act the same way a rotor that was connected in the normal USB type connection directly to SAT PC32 would respond. So if you use the DD string, all this fun stuff over here is ignored. Uh, I did try to find out if there was another way to send the actual rotor data over the um, DDE string connection, but never got a response, so just gave up and took this approach. Now, the other feature that this system has is the remote control of the four relays that are part of the uh, symbol sat relay or uh, rotor controller. And these relays can be used to control things like the uh, circularity switching on your antennas. Uh, it can be used to turn preamps on and off. It can be turned to turn amplifiers on and off or whatever you want. Uh, the commands for operating these... Satellite zero oh, rising. That's interesting. Uh, the commands are interspersed with the commands that may be coming from SAT PC32. Uh, for testing, you can use a very handy feature of the server SDX program by going to manual input. And here's a typical Yezu looking rotor uh, command. So if we click OK, that command goes from SAT PC32 into the virtual COM port that's part of the COM0 COM pair that was set up. That uh, virtual COM port 5, which we're using here, is just sent over to COM port 6. And COM port 6 is being listened to by the rotary motor program. So then it goes over the t uh, TCP connection to the rotor controller. And much to my astonishment, it actually works and the rotor moves as it's supposed to. So the rotor part, you know, and, and there's simpler ways of doing this. I'm not saying this is the only way. I'm, I'm certainly not even saying it's the best way. But the reason I did this was, you know, as my station was getting more complex, I had to deal with switching the polarity on the uplink and downlink antennas, and I wanted to be able to switch the uh, preamps on and off and stuff like that. So rather than, you know, add another bunch of garbage here, I just decided to intersperse the commands to control these relays uh, in with the normal TCP commands that are coming from SAT PC32. So here's some uh, little buttons for the four relays, and they each have their own little indicator, and currently they're all off. Um, when the remoter, rotor remoter program starts, it um, sends off commands to all four of these, so it turns them off. It was actually a little hard to decide exactly how that should work, um, but I don't know, when in doubt, turn it off has always been my theory. So if you can see the rotor string box displays the last thing that was sent um, to this IP address. Um, if we click on one of these uh, relay control uh, buttons, we can see like for number one, this turned on. And I extended the AZU command set by trying to use some innocuous commands. 
So x1 causes relay 1 to turn on, um, x0 turns it off. So if you want to turn on relay 2, you click on this, and x3 is sent over the TCP string to the controller, which then turns on relay 2. Uh, this actually does work. You'll have to take my word for it, but uh, that's okay. And again, that same TCP connection is used for the uh, actual plain old rotor controls coming from SAT PC32. Uh, oh, well, pretty cool. And I don't know, it just seems like the shack gets out of control with all these switches and knobs and so on, so I thought this would be kind of a nice way to integrate it. Plus, I am trying to remote control my station, and remote controlling the radios is really easy. Uh, remote controlling the rotors is slightly harder, um, but all the extra switches that we tend to need now, I know there's antenna switches with TCP connections and so on. Again, I'm, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it or even the best way to do it. It's just an example of, of something you might want to think about if you're, if you're trying to set up your station for remote control. Um, just, again, to kind of plant some ideas, I, I know a lot of you have your own control programs that you've written and, and use. I also um, integrated this into the program that I use just to, again, give you an idea and get your, you know, brain cells active. Um, this is just a plain old program. And for the TCP, I just integrated that in with the COM port selection. So if you want to use TCP, then you just select it from here, which actually worked out pretty well, you know, as a way to, you know, not clutter it up any more than it is, because it certainly is cluttered. And then the switch control, I just, you know, f moved some things around and found some, a little, created a little spot here. Uh, for the same type of controls that you saw in the rotor um, remoter program. So if you click on that, you know, switch one is turned on. I display the uh, strings that are sent out over the TCP connection in this box. So you can see there's X1 again. And if you click on the park button, there's the string that's sent out. This is actually a lot cleaner way to do it because you don't need that uh, device driver installed by COM0COM. All the, the connection is integrated right in the program. So hope this gives you some ideas on you know some kind of cool things you can do as you set up your satellite station. 73 is from W9KE.